these freaking batteries are so freaking elaborated. I mean, okay, it's 2018, but come on. Is it really necessary that they have a freaking microchip in them? Initiating. Welcome back to my daily grind. Create yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night. No time to lose. One day, one step in the right direction. I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you if I can do it, you can do it too. Welcome back to the vlog, it is Thursday and the topic for this vlog is a DIY dummy battery for the Sony a7 III. By the way, all DIY vlogs I guess right here, watch them all. But before we get started, of course, out to all my subscribers, thank you for making my love special and worth living to the max. So let me try to get back with a sweet, sweet video. Alrighty, we have arrived at part three of this trilogy of this vlog setup, Improvements Trilogy. In the first vlog, you can check it out right here, I introduced my DIY custom low profile monitor mount for the Ronin S in the vlog after this vlog i showed you this 12 volt output hack for the ronin s you can check it out right here and now this battery grip will power the ronin plus the ronin will power this monitor and now well this monitor has an 8 volt output i want to go from this out straight into the sony this enables me to remove two batteries from the system makes it a bit lighter greatly appreciated but there is a problem which i just figured out like two hours ago but yeah let's dive right into it so as you can see the dummy battery is in here and let's actually take a look designing it was surprisingly easy i guess it still took me like a good hour to do that uh, to come up with it but the print turned out super freaking flawless actually that's, that's the first iteration right there and i will get to the the cable layout and all of that in a in a bit but first let's actually get to this problem so here's another plug for the monitor right here goes in just like that let's turn on the ronin and as quickly as possible let's deactivate the motors there we go screen turns on so that's cool and now camera is turned off that's correct let's clamp it up red on black because that makes sense i guess and white on the red one which is the plus so now let's check this out first of all the screen will behave weirdly you know i already know what's going to happen and secondly well just just watch. Incompatible battery, use a correct model and camera will just shut off again. Now the good thing about it is that I, I didn't screw up anything, so I didn't damage the Sony. <laughs> That's good. The problem is, well these freaking batteries are so freaking elaborated. I mean, okay, it's 2018, but come on. Is it really necessary that they have a freaking microchip in them? I thought plus and minus and C is for the, you know, for the temperature sensor. That would make sense, I guess, but like a freaking microchip, what? Now, I tried to just measure the resistance against minus and then, well, let me show you the thing. So that's the battery in there with a few resistors because, you know, I thought that's all that you will need to match the resistance of the temperature sensor, but it's not a temperature sensor. It's actually a microchip and I found out about that later. Well, and that obviously sucks. But, I mean, it was still a pretty cool project. So that's the current state of this, the DIY dummy battery. I had to strip the wires to fit them inside these grooves. And it connects surprisingly well with this approach. Just, the, you know, inside the wires there are a lot of tiny, tiny leads, I guess. I took them and basically folded them over and it will just slide into the connect connecting pins, I guess, and it just works. So that's how I did it. And when I went with the first resistor, I was actually able to tuck it all in here and go out of, of this little hole. That worked out pretty good, but in the end it still won't work because mentioned reasons. And the way how I figured it out was actually by looking up third party dummy batteries and pretty much every one of them said fully encoded. And I was like, what the hell is like, fully encoded. There are half decoded dummy batteries from third party sellers, I guess, which only work to a certain degree, but the camera will accept them. And then there are fully decoded batteries and they will work and show you the percentage and all of that good stuff. If you want to save money, you need to get yourself a third party battery, which is fully decoded. And the only way to solve this problem for me would be to actually buy a third party fully decoded dummy battery. Then I would be able to 
completely set up in the way that I think it would be best. And in my last vlog, I said I will get to more cable management in this one, but I think I will actually get to it in my next vlog, which will probably be the first Sony A7 III vlog. Oh my God, I'm looking forward to that. So I this goes to the collection, I guess. I think for now I will, well, I will obviously use the Sony with, uh, with this battery. I will most certainly also use the battery for the monitor until I get my magnetic USB-C cable for the Ronin S so that I can charge it on the go because I don't want to stress this battery grip that much. But yeah, that's that's enough progress. Uh, fun project. <laughs> Learned a lot. So yeah, smash that like button the way I could smash this thing in the trash. Like totally. Bang the bell like but you never miss a DIY project. Check the resources on chrisviral.com and yeah, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>